Holy Father in heaven, thank you, dear Lord, for giving us the privilege to be among the living today. Glory, honor, praise, and adoration be unto your holy name. Dear Father, please take our lives and consecrate it to thee. May our whole time and efforts and strength and soul and all our skills and talents be consecrated to be used to your glory. This cannot be done except we have your help. Please, Father, as we go through our devotion, help us, Father, and give us grace and strength not to be hearers of your word only, but also doers of your word. May your spirit be upon me. Put your words in my mouth, that as I speak, I will speak blessings to all who listen. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. I may know him, November 15. The religion of little things. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Matthew chapter 25, verse 23. Said Christ, He that is faithful in that which is least, is faithful also in much. Luke 16 verse 10. In the little matters, some do not think it necessary to be so very exact. But this is the deception of Satan. Selfishness is at the root of all unfairness and all lack of fidelity. There is with many of the youth who profess to believe the truth a vanity, pride, profligacy and carelessness that are making them reckless and disqualifying them for a noble and elevated life here and unfitting them for the future life hereafter. There is not with all a careful improvement of the time for which they are paid. Those who fritter away their time or fail to put it to the best use are robbing God. Some have a very favorable opinion of those who are careless reckless of money and reckless of time. But God regards all these things in their true character, frauds which he will avenge. Time, talents and skill are to be brought into use and put to the very best account. Let everyone be true to principle as if the eye of the infinite one was upon him. You may, young men and women, make yourselves what you will by the grace of God combined with earnest efforts and determined will to resist inclination to indulgence. Christ gave to man a perfect example, but those who move out on what they call a liberal plan and become careless in the little matters will soon show a wide deviation from Christ's example, the only true pattern. Young men and young women, will you study more closely and prayerfully the life of Christ? and make that life your criterion, your standard? Practical religion must be carried into the lowly duties of daily life, and in the performance of these duties, you are forming characters that will stand the test of the judgment. Then, in whatever position you may be placed, whatever your duties may be, do them nobly and faithfully, realizing that all heaven is beholding your work. Amen. The title of our devotion for today is The Religion of Little Things. Matthew 25 verse 14 and down to 23 tells us the parable of the talents which we have been looking at for some days now. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Now we know the story, the one who had two talents traded upon it and got two more. The one who had five did the same thing, but the one who had one buried his talents. For these two, what did the Lord say to them? In verse 23, it says, His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Amen. So we're not looking at the one talent, but the one who had five and two talents, they got a well done from their master. 
And God said, Since you have been faithful in few things, I will make you a master over many things. The lesson here is that Jesus is going to reward the faithful use of the talents he has given to us. Apart from that, Jesus rewards faithfulness in general, that is faithfulness to him, faithfulness to even the little things in the instructions of God, diligent obedience to him is going to be rewarded. You know, it was a little thing Adam and Eve did. They were not faithful in that which was least. It was a simple thing the Lord said, don't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden. That was the simplest and littlest instruction. They were not faithful in it. And it showed that they would not have been faithful in much also. That's why it's a law that he that is faithful in that which is least will be faithful in much. It's a test that the Lord uses for us. How do you regard his law? How do you regard those things you consider little things? I keep emphasizing some of them. You see people neglecting these things that are little things. But Jesus tells us, it is by your attitude towards these little things that I am judging whether you are going to be faithful in that which is much. Faithfulness to God goes beyond avoiding whatever we perceive to be evil on the surface level. Faithfulness means indeed that we avoid evil, but it's our perception of evil that is faulty, not just what we perceive to be evil. God has instructions for all who will be his servants on the attitude they should have towards the duty or position that they have been given. We already saw in previous studies how God appoints a position and duty for everyone. Those who would stand at the post of their duty, understanding how they are treads in the web of humanity and will be bountifully rewarded by Jesus. God watches the attitude we have towards the responsibilities given us and is checking if we are faithful. Faithfulness is a quality of those who are children of God. In Revelation chapter 17 verse 14, speaking of God's children, why it is that they will be saved, it says, These, speaking of the people of the world, shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Amen. The faithfulness here referred to includes faithfulness in little things also. Faithfulness means to be true to duty and to perform a covenant or agreement without wavering. Faithfulness means that what we say, we will do. Faithfulness means that we perform our duty no matter how little or small it is to the letter. That is what faithfulness means. Now, one thing we read in our devotion here talked about how no matter what our duty is in the home or in the workplace, God is watching whether we are faithful in doing these works. Especially when somebody has paid for our time, we are employed by someone. Even though it is not God that gave you that employment, God is seeing our attitude towards the work that somebody is paying us for, whether we are using our time wisely and improving it for the person who paid us for our time. Reading from Review and Herald, September 22, 1891, paragraph 6, and I'll be reading downward also later. It says, It is the Christian's duty not to permit surroundings and circumstances to mold him, but to live above surroundings, fashioning his character according to the divine model. He is to be faithful in whatever place he is found. He is to do his duty with fidelity, improving the opportunities given him of God, making the most of his capabilities. With an eye single to the glory of God, he is to work for Jesus wherever he may be. We are to surrender the will, the heart to God and become acquainted with Christ. We must deny self, take up the cross and follow Jesus. Amen. So here God is saying to us that we should be faithful in whatever duty we are doing. It's your duty in the home to clean the toilets or the bathrooms or to sweep the house or to cook the food. These works are not to be done haphazardly. We are to do them thoroughly, faithfully and not in a haphazard manner. And we are told also that we should practice self-denial. And one other thing here I will pick up. It says that self-denial is to stand at the post of duty when others may fail. 
to lift responsibilities wherever and whenever you can, not for the purpose of applause, not for policy, but for the sake of the master who has given you a work to be done with unwavering fidelity, when you might praise yourself to keep silent and let other lips praise you. Self-denial is to do good to others where inclination will lead you to serve and please yourself. Although your fellow men may never appreciate your efforts or give you credit for them, yet you are to work on. End of quote. Amen. You see, this is exactly what the Lord calls fidelity. Standing at the post of duty whenever or wherever it is possible, taking up responsibilities, not working as unto men, but working as unto God, not being I servants. That's what the Bible says, that we should not be I servants. That is, only working when there's an eye upon you so that it will look like you are hard working but when there is no supervision you use the time for yourself and you do not work only when people are around then you want to show yourself to be hard working when your boss is around god is watching these things that we do and he knows that we are not being faithful in that which is least continuing the reading from review and herald september 22 1891 it says how many profess to be the servants of Christ, but how loath are they to bear reproach and shame for his sake? The cross is not to please self. It lies across the path of the pleasure lover and cuts through our carnal desires and selfish inclinations. The cross rebukes all unfaithfulness in your labors. If you bear the cross of Christ, you will not shun responsibilities or burden bearing. If you are abiding in Christ, learning in his school, you will not be rude, dishonest, or unfaithful. Here this now it says, The cross cuts to the root of all unholy passions and practices. Whatever the nature of your work, you will carry the principles of Christ into your labor and identify yourself with the task given into your hands. Your interest will be one with that of your employer. If you are paid for your time, you will realize that the time for work is not your own but belongs to the one who pays you for it. If you are careless and extravagant, wasting material, squandering time, failing to be painstaking and diligent, you are registered in the books of heaven as an unfaithful servant. Those who are unfaithful in the least temporal affairs will be unfaithful in responsibilities of greater importance. They will rob God and fail of meeting the claims of the divine law. They will not realize that their talents belong to God and should be devoted to His service. Those who do nothing for their employers, except that which is commanded them when they know that the prosperity of the work depends on some extra exertion on their part, will fail to be accounted faithful servants. Let me pause here. I'll continue the reading. So, we are told here now, that faithfulness means that we use judiciously that which belongs to our employers and one of the things that belongs to our employers is our time the time they have paid us for belongs to them and whatever work they have given you to do you are to do that work for them in that time that they have paid you for also you are not to divert resources for personal use when you use the data of your employer for frivolous and unhelpful things, you are not being faithful in little things. If you use it rather to develop yourself so that you can be a better employee for your employer, that is good enough. Using your work time for personal labor when your work is not yet accomplished shows unfaithfulness. Some people are very skilled and within the time frame given to them, they may have finished the work their employer gave them. When they are true with that, I do not say they are unfaithful when they use the time to do other things because they finished the job they were given. But when you have not finished the job you were given by someone who gave you work to do within that time frame, and yet you have the time to do other things for yourself, yet you are collecting the money, that's unfaithfulness. When you use the materials of your employers for personal use, you take their resources from the office back to your home, stationaries and books and all of that. You just keep taking them to yourself, siphoning funds to yourself. These things shows unfaithfulness. Some will even go as far as stealing from their employers. I've heard of people who even take chairs from their offices back to their home as their own and say it belongs to them, that they are just taking their cut from the government. That's what they say. 
this kind of unfaithfulness the Lord is seeing. I've seen cases where people would even take the petrol or the gasoline back to their homes to be used in their own generators. They steal it. These things are showing unfaithfulness. There are those who are paid. Some people, they will pay them the money supposed to be for their employer and they will use it for their personal things. And they will, they will then falsify the documents to make it look like everything in the account is balanced whereas it is not balanced they are cheating their employer they are stealing from their employer god is watching these things and like we read in our devotion very strong words we read today that i may know him page 325 paragraph 2 those who fritter away their time or fail to put it in the best use are robbing god some have a favorable opinion of those who are careless reckless of money and reckless of time but God regards all these things in their true character. Frauds, and it doesn't stop them. Frauds which he will avenge. End of quote. Strong words. Do you know God is going to avenge for these things we do? We need to be really careful. The Lord is watching us. We need to be faithful in little things. Don't say, oh, it's because I'm doing it to man, then it's not a great sin. It's only when I do it to God. God is seeing how we are treating our fellow men. And he sees fraud as a sin against himself, which he will avenge. We need to be faithful. Why is it that people are unfaithful? Covetousness, envy, the desire to get, 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 greed, that's the reason. People are greedy, that's the reason. They are discontented. And that's why the Lord says to us, be content with what you have. Don't envy another man's goods. Be content. That's what the word of God says. And he will reward us for our contentment. It's when we are not content that we do these things. I'll continue the reading here. It says, there are many things not specified that wait to be done that come directly under the notice of the one employed leaks and losses occur that might be prevented if painstaking diligence and unselfish effort were manifested if the principles of love enjoined upon us by jesus were carried out in the life of those who profess his name but many are working in the course of god who are registered as i servants it is the most abhorrent form of selfishness that leads the worker to neglect the improvement of time, the care of property, because he is not directly under the eye of the master. But do such workers imagine that their neglects are not noticed, their unfaithfulness not recorded? Could their eyes be opened? They would see that a watcher looks on, and all their carelessness is recorded in the books of heaven. Those who are unfaithful to the work of God are lacking in principle their motives are not of a character to lead them to choose the right under all circumstances the servants of god are to feel at all times that they are under the eye of their employer he who watched the sacrilegious feast of belshazzar is present in all our institutions in the counting room of the merchant that's of the accountant in the private workshop and the bloodless hand is surely recording your neglect as it recorded the awful judgment of the blasphemous king. Belshazzar's condemnation was written in words of fire. Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. And if you fail to fulfill your God-given obligations, your condemnation will be the same. Amen. Very strong words here. I saw something here that the, pre the problem, those who are unfaithful, their problem is that they are lacking in principle. This is where we should solve the problem of unfaithfulness, the lack of principle. We should make it a principle to be content, a principle to never be fraudulent, a principle to be faithful no matter where we are found. That should be our principle so that whenever tem we are tempted to divert funds to ourselves or to divert resources for private use, we will not do it. We should be trustworthy and reliable people. People should be able to know this is the child of God and whatever I put in his hands, I am sure that it will certainly be well. He will not cheat me. I can go to sleep knowing very well that I have kept my business in good hands. This was what Potiphar and Pharaoh found in Joseph. That Potiphar left his house for Joseph to manage without supervision, knowing very well that this boy he was a good person. He would never steal. He would never divert resources to himself. He would certainly do what is right. So did Pharaoh to Joseph. Faithfulness, trustworthiness, reliability was what 
the CV of Joseph read. He is someone who you could trust. He is a loyal person. Do you know that skill is not what many employers are looking for? Many employers are looking for faithfulness, loyalty, reliability, trustworthiness. These skills are above even the soft skills and the hard skills. I'll call them spiritual skills. I've seen it before. No matter how you may not, they may not like you, the fact that they can trust you will make them keep you around them because they know that you will never do them wrong. This should be our principle. Continuing the reading, it says, There are many who profess to be Christians who are not united with Christ. Their daily life, their spirit testifies that Christ is not formed within the hope of glory. They cannot be depended upon. They cannot be trusted. They are anxious to reduce their service to the minimum of effort and at the same time exact the highest wages. The name servant applies to every man, for we are all servants, and it will be well for us to see what mold we are taking on. Is it the mold of unfaithfulness or of fidelity? Is it the disposition generally among servants to do as much as possible? Is it not rather the prevalent fashion to slide through the work as quickly, as easily as possible, and obtain the wages at as little cost to themselves as they can? The object is not to be as thorough as possible, but to get the remuneration. Those who profess to be the servants of Christ should not forget the injunction of the Apostle Paul. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of, it, of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Those who enter the works, Amen. Those who enter the work as eye servants will find that their work cannot bear the inspection of men or of angels. The thing essential for successful work is a knowledge of Christ, for this knowledge will give sound principles of right, impart a noble, unselfish spirit like that of our Savior whom we profess to serve. Faithfulness, economy, caretaking, thoroughness should characterize all our work. Wherever we may be, whether in the kitchen, in the workshop, in the office of publication, in the sanitarium, in the college, or wherever we are stationed in the vineyard of the Lord, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. End of quote. Amen. I would like to also read something from Testimonies, Volume 5, page 179, paragraph 2. It says, The world has a right to expect strict integrity in those who profess to be Bible Christians. By one man's indifference in regard to paying his just dues, all our people are in danger of being regarded as unreliable. End of quote. Amen. This is another way of being unfaithful. We've already talked about unfaithfulness in our in our stations and wherever we're employed. But what I have just read now, as an employer of labor, when we don't pay our employees, those who have worked for us, we are showing ourselves also to be unfaithful. We are showing ourselves to be unreliable and be lack we cannot be trusted. God is watching that also. While he's watching the employee, he's also watching the employer to see whether they will be faithful in fulfilling that which they agreed, what, what they covenanted, that if someone does this, this is how much they will pay. And when you don't pay fully the wages of those who have worked for you, it is written in heaven against you in words of fire, thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. That fraud God sees it as being done against himself and he will avenge it. He will avenge it. So let us be careful. The Lord is watching how we do our daily duties. It is a measure of whether we can work in his own vineyard. Because when we cannot work for men, how can we do the same for God? Many people think that oh, when it is for God, I will certainly do well. I have known people to steal even God's money. To divert funds that belong to evangelism, tithes that were supposed to be used for the ministry to their own personal pockets. I've seen people who do that because they lack principle. 
it has not been a principle for them that no matter the straight places they find themselves in, they will never save themselves by sin. This is the principle here. People have not set it as a principle for themselves that sin is not an outlet to my troubles, that iniquity is not a solution to my problems. If we have set it as a law for ourselves, look at Joseph's faithfulness. Iniquity was never a solution for him. When Potiphar's wife lured him to sin, after that time she took his dress and he ran away and knew very well that what she wanted to do was to set him up. He could have said to himself to avoid this trouble, let me go and sin. But he, he did not see it that way. Iniquity is not a solution for him. As a principle, he would rather go to prison than commit iniquity to escape the trouble he found himself in. This is the foundation of unfaithfulness. It is that people have not made up their minds to keep the commandments of God. We are in straight places even today and times are hard and people's characters are being revealed. My, may the Lord help us. I've heard things people have done, diverting funds, stealing from their employers. Many people are showing their characters now. They cannot suffer the poverty. They would rather steal. They would rather divert funds. Some have even left their faith. They have not been faithful to the Lord anymore. Because of the hardship, they have said, it will profit me rather to dress like the world, to do a job that I know is not good, to join and mix with the world and make friends with the world and drop by the principles they have practiced for years. Why? So that they can make ends meet. This is the main point of unfaithfulness. Let us make it a principle to always be faithful in little things. Reading Christian Leadership, page 24, paragraph 3, it says, As we descend, it's this honesty its craftiness, its selfish eye service, its pretense and its boasting, its want of fair honest dealing in the ordinary course of life and its grasping covetousness. We can take our stand by precept and example to represent Christ and convert soul from the world by our sound principles, our firm integrity, our hatred of all dissembling and our holy boldness in acknowledging Christ. Amen. This is what we should be doing at this time making a stand even in this time of hardship that by precept and by example we would represent Christ and convert souls by our sound principles if we are diligent and yet we cannot be trusted let's say you are hardworking but yet you cannot be trusted how can we possibly be where God wants us to be you know when you lack these attributes you choose your path for yourself as for Joseph, I was using as an example, his faithfulness led him to the prison and from the prison to Pharaoh's courtyard and he became the prime minister. What if he had preserved his job in Potiphar's house by iniquity? He would never have gone to that prison which was actually the stepping stone for him to go to Pharaoh's courtyard. And what if he was also unfaithful in the prison because the Bible says he was kept as the leader of those in the prison and he was faithful in his job there. If he was not faithful, if he was not good to the butler and also to the baker, he would not have been called to Pharaoh's house. Many of us have chosen a path for ourselves, gone far away from where the Lord wants us to be. We chose to preserve our jobs by unfaithfulness. We chose to get a job by unfaithfulness, to make ends meet by unfaithfulness and by charting that path and by charting that path we have gone far away from God's predestined plan for us we have cut out our own way for ourselves God cannot work with us we are unqualified for the duties that God would have us to do because the work that he placed you in would have trained you for what he wanted you to do it was not by miracle that we know that Joseph was made the head of the servants in Potiphar's house or in the prison he was hardworking, and this was what brought him to the position he held. It was his genuine interest in the work of his master. We read that today, that we should take the work of our master to be as though it is our own. This is why Jesus asked the question, if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's own, how can anybody give you your own thing to manage? It is, look at yourself, how many of us actually faithful with ourselves? When there is nobody in the house, what do you eat? Many of us may not even take the pains to give good to cook cook good food. Why? It's just us. Let me just eat something little. We have this attitude of being quite lax with ourselves. And that's why the Lord said, 
the training for handling your own business for example is by taking another person's business seriously because it's a fact many people don't take their own things seriously they cut themselves some slack they wait they, if it was for themselves they wake up anytime they want it's their own business they open it when they want and they will be unfaithful with their own business but god trains us with other people's businesses if you are not faithful in someone else's work jesus is asking the question how can i give you your own to manage when you have been wicked with another person's own and there are some who will be faithful in their own business but they are unfaithful with someone else's own the same question is what the lord is asking with this wicked attitude will it be just for me to give you your own when i have seen how unfaithful you have been with another person's own god is saying it will not be just so let us show that diligence there are many who want to be daniels and josephs as prime ministers of egypt or prime minister of babylon but they forget that these people received a training what should our greatest anxiety be it should be to fill the place in the life that god proposes that we what we it should be to pray to fill the place in life that god proposes that we fulfill this can only be achieved by faithfulness to god in little things do not neglect the little things and little duties for they furnish us with a training for greater responsibilities it is god that works out the circumstances and providence that eventually leads us to be in the place where he wants us to be therefore let us be faithful in little things let us pray Thank you, dear Lord, for the blessing of your word which you have received today. Please, Father, forgive us for our faithfulness in little things. Help us to be diligent workers, people who can be trusted and are reliable, people who are faithful in little things. Forgive us for our faithfulness, O Lord, and help us now to make it a principle never to use iniquity to come out of our troubles, especially in this time of hardship, O Lord. Some have it harder than others, and I can sympathize. I pray, Lord, please, as people are being tested at this time, help, O oh Lord, that we shall decide to represent Christ, that we shall decide to be faithful regardless of the hardships that surround us, that we will not cheat, we will not be fraudulent, we will not steal at this time, we will not put our hands into things that are sinful just so we can make ends meet. Lord, please help us to this end. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This message was brought to you by the Angel with a Strong Voice, a ministry dedicated to preparing people to stand true to God and be ready for His imminent return. For more information and free online resources, please visit www.tawas.org. That is www.tawasv.org or contact info at tawas.org.